jeans. We've all got them. And I'm not talking about the ripped skinny jeans you still have in your cupboard from the glorious days of 2014. I'm talking about the essential building blocks in the blueprint of life, or DNA. We've known for some time that our genes, or better yet our genomes, are what enable us to function. But what if I told you that we can manipulate such a delicate system? Welcome back to another episode of the Genetic Basis of Stuff and Things. I'm Jenna, your host for today's episode as we talk about recoding genomes and what this means for the genetic code that we have all come to know and love. So genes. We know them as the most basic unit of inheritance, nestled within the coiled cores of our DNA. Genes are essentially a set of instructions that tell ourselves what proteins to make, like brown pigments found in our eyes. If we look closely at our DNA, it uses a particular set of codes to tell ourselves what they need to make. These codes can be figured out using what's known as the genetic code. The genetic code is something we cracked a while ago, with scientists like Nuremberg discovering in 1966 that our genome is made up of a set of 64 codons. However, a whopping 18 out of these 64 can be considered redundant, as multiple codons can encode the same amino acid. So back to our DNA. Every organism has a unique genetic code, but what genome sequencing has taught us is that that code is relatively uniform across the species. This revelation allowed scientists to explore the possibilities of synthetic recreation of entire genomes. One of the first to explore this chemical synthesis to alter a genome was Kaplan in 1971, through the isolation of nonsense and missense mutations. These molecular geneticists altered the tRNAs of E. coli, containing an amber suppressor mutation allowing them to insert incorrect amino acids at various points in a protein. However, this led to ambiguous code, causing inefficient protein production. From these humble beginnings, genome recoding has significantly improved the growth of technology and knowledge. In 2016, Julius Friedens, along with several other group members, were able to synthetically recode the genome of E. coli in just 14 steps, using a CRISPR-Cas9 system. However, Friedens wanted to take this a step further. Three years later, Frieden set out to understand whether an entire working E. coli genome could be recoded to exclude redundant codons. So, the researchers took a parental strain called MSD42 and modified it so that the serine codons TCG and TCA, as well as the stop codon TAG, systematically replaced the codons AGC, AGT and TAA, respectively. This partially synthetic genome was then split into eight 0.5 megabase sections, which was separated further into four or five fragments. These delicate units were then maintained in a bacterial artificial chromosome containing correct homologous sequences that would allow them to stitch together the entire genome later in the process. REXA, or Replicon Excision for Enhanced Genome Engineering through Program Recombination, was used to sequentially replace 100 kilobases of wild-type genomic sequences with its corresponding synthetic fragment until the entire E. coli genome had been replaced by synthetic fragments. A conjugation-based strategy was implemented, conjugating the recoded donor sections containing the origin of transfer into recoded recipient sections. The result? Not only a fully recoded E. coli genome, creating a strain known as SYN61, but an E. coli genome with three fewer codons. Through chemical synthesis and the recoding of E. coli genome, Freedoms was able to create a functional E. coli strain that could use fewer codons than the amount that was thought to be essential, opening the floodgates for further experimentation with the SYN61 strain. Now, you may be wondering, what's the big deal? Well, this research has invited scientists to consider other applications of genome recoding. A paper published in 2023 suggests that genome minimization and refunctionalization is all the rage in synthetic biological groups nowadays. This is because with smaller genomes, it can decrease the cost of synthesis and the time and labor needed for genome synthesis projects. Also, with the increasing growth and complexity of CRISPR-based genome editing tools, new methods for the accurate and fast removal of genome segments in mammalian cells have become much easier. The recoding of genomes is an area of genetics which is only at the very beginnings of its journey, and we are truly at the precipice of discovery. With techniques such as CRISPR being utilised in the health industry, cures for many genetic diseases and disorders are just on the horizon, bringing new hope to our world through the power of genetics.